our YouTube. So we're now officially a month into our trip. We're still out in the beautiful Nullarbor and over the last couple of days we've been reflecting quite a lot on the last month of our riding and what we've been loving about it, what are the ch most challenging parts about it. So we thought we'd put together this monthly reflection video just as a cheeky bonus to the other things that we're putting out there. So yeah, enjoy. <laughs> So we'll start with the uh, the stats for all of the, the spreadsheet nuffies out there. Joel, looking at you. Um, so these are, have all been pulled from our Strava page and the link for the Strava is below if, uh, if that's something that you're interested in, so you can check that out. All right, so we've been on the road for 30 days. We've been on the bike for 22 of those and we've had eight rest days in between, which includes the, the van trip across the start of the Nullarbor. Uh, the total kilometers are now 1,823 k's on a bike, although we've traveled further. Total elevation gain has been 10,363 meters. And to put that in context, uh, Mount Everest is sitting at 8,849 meters above sea level. <laughs> so I've done a fair chunk of climbing. Yeah. And a lot to come. Average k's per day is 83 at the moment, which is above what we were hoping for in our first month with our building up and increasing our fitness levels and us wanting to hit an average of about 75 a day. So that's great, we're, we're really stoked with that. And our average speed is about 18.3 Ks and that varies massively. We've had some where we've been down at like 12, 13 Ks for the day when we were trekking through the sand yeah. uh, down on the coast on the Great Ocean Road and then some where we've just had huge tailwinds and been able to fly at close to 30 Ks an hour. So. Yeah. Yeah, very dependent on the conditions. Yes. Stats. So physically we're feeling better than expected. We haven't really had any niggles of, of any sort. We're feeling really strong. Our muscles have kind of changed a little bit. Probably at the start of the trip we had like sprinter's legs with like big chunky muscles. Well, I didn't, James did. <laughs> and now they've kind of changed to a bit more of a leaner endurance style muscle which is kind of cool in itself isn't mm. it but worrying at first because we start, yeah. <laughs> our legs started getting thinner and we're yeah. expecting the opposite we didn't know where they were going yeah so in addition to some nice lean muscles we've also got ridiculous tan lines we've got sock marks we've got short marks we've got t-shirt marks we've got glove marks even on our fingers i've got them and we're starting to get sunny tan lines which i'm not happy about mm. So actually on the bike, our legs are pretty much consistently tired, which is fine. You just get used to that. Just a background thing. Yeah. Yeah. But physically, probably our bums is the biggest thing, isn't it? It's, mm. Yeah. It's managing the saddle sores, which is the thing that holds us back from doing more riding. Yeah. yeah. We're having to work pretty hard on that. So at the moment, our routine is to try to wash our shorts bike shorts every day or two just to get the salt out of them and stop the rubbing. Each day in the morning we'll baby powder just to stop any of the sweat and the water accumulating and then at night we give ourselves a good wash and we put some Vaseline on and just try and let yeah. things settle down and on the days that we don't do that we notice that they get quite sore and it's just Definitely. an uncomfortable day's ride yeah. so. Yeah we've got to look after our little butts. Mm. But it's been good no injuries um, and yeah I think where our bodies are getting used to the fact that they're going to be working every yep. day for a while. All right, so a mental update. Uh, I think generally we're, we're in a very, very good space. We can feel our minds still, even after a month, yeah. just slowing down, slowing down, becoming a little bit less focused on the kilometers gained and the stats and things and how we're breaking up our day and more just about enjoying the ride, which is really nice. Still taking a while to get ourselves out of that city work mode but it's definitely starting to happen. Yeah, you can probably tell via the videos, everything's getting a bit more childish. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. Mentally, we're regressing. Yeah. We've started doing ridiculous things. <laughs> we're annoying each other out in the road with stupid, annoying little things, but we are having a lot of fun out yeah. here. So that's great. It's nice to be able to occupy our minds with 
childish things. <laughs> We've had one day of homesickness, maybe two weeks in, yeah. a week and a half in. Um, but we've actually found that the further we're getting away from home now we've we've moved away from areas that we're familiar with yeah it's not there as much anymore and and we're much more sort of focused on what we're doing right now and what's ahead of us so that's been that's been nice mm. the tent and our little camp set up although it moves every day that's starting to feel more and more like home and we're loving the security of the tent and, yeah. and being in that space <laughs> it's actually been nice not have, having to worry about the things that we used to worry about. There's less angst, there's less stress. Yeah. COVID stuff's still in the background. It's not really as relevant to us now, particularly after we've crossed the border. Mm. Uh, things like emails and where to be and making plans on, on the weekend and things like that that we used to get stressed about, yeah. they're not really things to worry about anymore. And, and although it sounds like these should be bigger things to worry about, things like food, water and shelter, they're, they're the main priorities for us right now and they're yeah. the things that we're worrying about. And it's actually less stressful worrying about the fundamentals than all of those nitty gritty things. So yeah. that's been actually really, really nice. It's refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> and I think generally in terms of our motivation, I don't think it could be higher right now. We're still loving where we're riding at the moment. We're really excited about where we're traveling to next. Yeah. And I think generally we're just in a really good space. So the high points of the trip for me personally when we dropped down from Port Augusta down into the flats that hill drop was amazing but also coming into scenery that I was unfamiliar with the colors down there and just the the, the vastness of the open plains was really impactful that was a big moment yeah, yeah that really hit hard it was amazing we were super pumped up yeah that. That was we were. Cool. yeah um I think one of mine was, I mean, a pretty recent one. Mm. Uh, actually, the, the crossing into the WA border. That was a huge weight off our minds. We, yeah. were, we were getting pretty angsty about that for about a week leading up to it. There was just so little that we could control about that situation. Yeah. And we wanted to be in Western Australia so bad. So when we finally crossed that border, oh man. Well, you saw us dancing. We were quite excited. Yeah, we were, <laughs> we were thrilled. So that's been good. All of that's off our shoulders now. And yeah. it's been nice just being able to sort of settle back into a routine of riding just daily with less interruptions. Yeah. And take, out, take it a little bit slower. And my next one is a little bit controversial. My other high that I could think of was when we reached the top of Labor's Hill. Now, usually I hate hill climbing. And because we'd done Labor's Hill before, I was already like dreading it. But the fact that we actually did it and we did it quite confidently and we, yeah, we just managed it really well. I, I thought that was a really pivotal moment for me in terms of my mindset of tackling hard things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then the reward for it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think my last one uh, was the, the Bunda Cliffs, regardless yeah. of poor Droney falling that day waking up that morning on my own and getting up and seeing that that big sunrise and then hearing the dingoes yelling and then sitting down for a coffee on the side of the cliff with my book and just being able to to chill in such a spectacular area yeah. that was quite a surreal out-of-body experience that was that was really cool yeah they were just absolutely stunning yeah we, when we first drove in there James and I just kind of got out the car and we were like where what are we this is we, yeah. we couldn't even we kind of just like, got dropped there it was like it was insane yeah that was cool yeah and i guess the other thing too is just like the amount of belly laughs we've had out out here without the, the stress and things worrying yeah. about as much and having permission to be silly and stupid and idiotic and childish <laughs> without <laughs> anyone else out there judging us yeah it's just been great we've just been able to have some big big belly laughs and uh, and just reconnect properly after a, a pretty stressful year last year so yeah, yeah. <laughs> some big highlights for you we haven't really had too many lows to be honest and no. the lows uh, wh while we have felt them strongly they haven't really lasted that long I think overwhelmingly it's been a, a super positive experience yeah. but we thought we would touch on a couple because it is important to mention it and yeah. you know the, the kind of journeys aren't always easy so no. The one thing that really got to me was going through so much farmland and then seeing a, a section of natural habitat and then more farmland. You really 
got the sense that the farms had, you know, stripped all of that natural beauty and um, all the ecosystems were just ripped apart. And yeah, that really hit home for me. It was quite confronting, actually, mm. what we've kind of done to the planet. Yeah, after you ride through them for days and days and days and realize how much of the country is taken up yeah. by it. Although it's like, it's essential stuff and we need it yeah. obviously for food and things. It starts to look like a scar rather than something productive. It does, yeah. And you can see the earth depleting where the soil for the farms is compared to like the I'll scrubby swear. brush and things yeah. like that. It's still dry, but there's so much life there. So. Yeah, it wasn't quite depressing, but it was definitely confronting. Mm. For me, one of the lows was probably the, the angst that we had in our chests in that week leading up to the border. Yeah. Generally, we don't have to have that many things to stress about on this trip. We're quite free, we're quite open with where yeah. we're going. But that was a point that we definitely had to hit at some point in our trip. And there was just all of these things outside of our control. Yeah. And we were putting ourselves in a potentially vulnerable position getting out into the Nullarbor and potentially having to get turned back. So it made yeah. me feel a bit uncomfortable and we both definitely felt the angst leading up to that. So yeah. that was a little unpleasant. And also having like five sets of plans, like actually fully, fully thought through just in case this happened or this happened or this happened. There's a lot to coordinate behind the scenes mm. there. Yeah. Yeah. It was a couple of days of planning. Which, Tiring. Yeah. <laughs> which was not riding a bike. Yeah. The whole point of the, the trip. Whole point. <laughs> And then obviously, like, we can't forget about uh, poor Droney, rest in peace. Yes, and our coffee percolator. That feeling <laughs> when the swallow came and hit it, seeing the screen go grey and saying GPS disconnected. <laughs> and I could hear the drone for about 30 seconds. I could still hear it whirring down below the cliffs. And then it just dropped off completely into the water. Mm. I, I just dropped down on the chest. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. It was a rough couple of hours. Yeah. I guess on the flip side of that, since doing that, all of the support that's come through from that, people wanting to contribute financially or just send a really thoughtful word to get Droney back or at least yeah. Droney number two, <laughs> it really has turned into a big positive. Where we've, we've been really overwhelmed and, and quite yeah. moved. Yeah. Really, really moved by all of that. So I don't know. I guess that's what happens yeah. on these big trips yeah. you get the swings and the roundabouts and every cloud right yeah every cloud yeah so we feel like we're putting together a holistic picture of what the cycling trip is for us but if there's anything that you're curious about or you want to know a little bit more about um just leave us a question in the comments and we'll maybe we'll do a little section on one of our next videos yeah yeah we might collect all of the questions and then yeah in the next video or two we'll just we'll do a question and answer section yeah. and answer them as, as many as we can so yeah drop them in as many as you want yeah even if you think they're silly yeah just pop them in yeah that's the teacher coming out in me <laughs> no such thing as a silly question so that's that's all for the uh for the monthly update i think overall picture is just that we're we're having a ball out here. We're absolutely yeah. loving it. Lots of laughter, lots of silliness, lots and of uh, <laughs> lots of riding. And uh, we're just so excited that we're looking at this and we've only done one month and we may have five, maybe six more months out here. Uh, there's just so much to see and so much to get done. So we've got a few highlights at the end. So stick around and have a look at those and we'll see you in a few days with the next episode. We did some shopping. <laughs> <laughs> We passed a couple of points, uh, <laughs> Bay of Islands. <laughs> Some coffee all over myself. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Thanks, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>